Welcome to the number one Korg podcast on the internet. This is episode 22. 22 Welcome, already, wow. one and all. I'm Adam Whittle, and I'm joined as always by Loop Superfingers Edwards. Hello. And Andy Flat Cap. <laughs> I've dropped the lambskin. Uh, pull yeah, I'm not you sure haven't got about his cap on. I didn't. Well, I've, I've got it here. But I don't want to just be Flat Cap. He's got I it sign up or agreed to that, but fine. <laughs> and our very, very special that. guest, John McCubbery, Korg Vice President for International Sales and Marketing, again with us, once again. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Oh, Thank you for fantastic. having me. Welcome. In today's show, we're going to talk Prologue, Volca Mix, Cord Connect, KO55 Prog, and the Cord Monopoly. Mm, mm. Said it right that Cord time. Monopoly. We'll get to that. Okay. Gay Goggles Chronology, new sounds for Monologue, new operating systems for Chrome Cross, all sorts happening. But we're going to start with housekeeping, a new Ooh. a new feature. What's this then? Start it so. It's things that we're doing, things that we're up to before we get into the news. Okay. So obviously we've done Hangout recently. We've recently done one in Sheffield. Yep. It was very successful. We've got another one. Date for your diary. The Korg Hangout in Milton Keynes on May the 24th. Ooh, the home game. Indeed. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Go. Then we've got yeah, the Seacroft Keyboard and Organ Festival from the 21st to the 28th of April. And, of course, BMC from the 27th to the 28th of April. So what's going go. on? Some house, mm. lots, lots happening for us this month. So, let's crack on. Let's get into the news. Let's, let's have some news. news. Let's have a jingle. <laughs> So, Monopoly. So, I've got here we go. I've got a review. We're going to open with a review. So, the Monopoly update with uh, Hasbro Monopoly skin. This is a, a, a review by Peter Kern uh, on CDM Link. So, happy 1st of April. Monopoly Synth, the Monopoly board game. Get it? Actually, the serious. Korg are doing a complete reskin of the Monopoly synth for iOS to look like the classic board game. Whose idea with that? Whose idea with that? Well, how fantastic does it look? I honestly thought that was an April Fool's. So, 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 so did I. Day, it well, I got be. an email. Yeah. I got an email with it on, and I'm like, oh, that's just fantastic. Yep. Yeah, share that on Twitter. Oh, aren't we brilliant? Aren't we fun? And it's true, it's actually there. And the reason that we chose April the 1st was so that people would think it's an April 1st Oh, so it was intentional. Oh, it's quite intentional. If you remember a few years ago, we put out a tuna in a can called Canned Tuna. Yes, Mm. I do remember. And remember that? That was also April the 1st. Everyone, "Ah, oh my God, they're real. (laughs) Well, well, (laughs) what I love about it, and the reason why I've picked this particular article, um, is that it, it ends with, whether you think this is ridiculous or not, it shows Korg... It's always ready to collaborate with partners, building on past experiments with modular hardware, learning platform little bits, of course. Nintendo games consoles. Uh, We'll get back to that later. (laughs) Artists like, okay, go on more. However silly this little venture is, it seems to keep an image of Korg that's playful and open to new ideas. And I thought that was just great. What a great way to, to end. So everybody needs to get, it's free. I can't believe it's free. It's free. I love the dials as well with the little piece, pieces <laughs> like the dog turning and around. The and the thing is as well, if you if you The roll, random function. Yeah, if you roll <laughs> yeah. the dice, nice. it yeah. randomises. Yeah. It's That's fantastic. Great. Yeah. So, oh. so the sound can be randomised depending upon where the dice land. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's absolutely it's, awesome. It's very, very clever. Mm. So we all need to, uh, to get on that. And so uh, just one bit mm. of background on that. Yeah, sure. Um, I used to work retail mm. 35 years ago. And... I used to sell the Monopoly, and the number of people came who came in saying, "You've just copied the name of the game." Well, no, it's actually <laughs> monophonic and polyphonic. That's the whole point. Which exactly. in those days, and it's got a slash in it, in the middle. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that actually has a different meaning in Australia. Oh, but well, anyway, yeah, we'll, on. Yeah. we'll move on. But um, and so for many years, that whole "Why did you copy the name of the game?" question keeps coming up. Right. So mm. when we released the Monopoly on, uh, you know, iOS, um, we actually had people calling saying, "Why are you copying the name of the game?" We thought that's it. We have to own <laughs> this. <laughs> yes. to pro- First of all, we didn't copy the. And of course, when we approached Hasbro, their reaction was, 
almost as bewildered as some of the consumers saying, you're joking. No, 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 no. no. We, we, and this is what we do, and this is how good it sounds, and this is our idea. And once they heard the randomised thing, they thought that was great because, of course, the whole point of a board game is it's fixed moves of course, yeah, and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we added in this kind of crazy thing. And you don't have to get it if you don't want. It's okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Fantastic. And, it, and of fun. it landed on April uh, the 1st as well. Yes. I think it's just really funny, though, because if you bought the app and you didn't know it was there and you accidentally pressed that button, it's like, what? <laughs> what's this? It's like turning it into a game of Monopoly. But, well, yeah. 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 Monopoly. Monopoly, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Indeed, indeed. Mono slash so, poly. <laughs> obviously, other uh, important information this month for the UK is that Prologue shipped. Yes, it's out, out there, there now. Uh, Volca Mix. Yep. Um, so, obviously, uh, I've got a bit of a, a review. Ooh. Uh, this time from The Verge. And the reason why right. I picked this review is because um, that John gets a mention. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> is it in a good way? It's though? in a good way. It sounds way. like a post no, the office. Thing is, uh, obviously, <laughs> those of you that watched the the uh, and listened to the the podcast that John very kindly was on last year, he gave us an ex bit of an exclusive. We actually charted in the iTunes charts because of that. So thank you for Got that. Number and we will not, you know. Uh, so it says there has been whispers about Korg's forthcoming synth ever since the company's vice president said on a podcast oh, doesn't even name us. Uh, then a new product was coming that started with P and ends and contains eight letters. The prologue is the sort of follow-up to Korg's Minilog and Monolog since it released in 2015-16 respectively. And although it carries over the clean and accessible interface from this line, it is entirely more powerful in what it can produce. I mean, the reception for the UK has been phenomenal. Yeah. 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 And what, uh, how are you finding the reception worldwide? What, what's well, in all the, the major analog markets, every unit that we can build between now and December is sold. Yeah. So wow. l let me just say that again, this is not hype. Every unit is sold between now and yeah, December. Yeah. It's, uh, and I'm talking here about a lot of music stores taking product. Of course. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean that customers have ordered it, but even though we're producing a huge quantity every month, the demand is so high that if people haven't gone in to at least check it out to make a decision about whether they want it or not, they could be missing out. Mm. The thing is is very hot. Yeah, very, is. In fact, I could say that the reaction we've had in Japan has been uh, um, even beyond our wildest expectations. So we're very happy about well, it. So and it's not finished yet. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And certainly here in the UK, it's been incredible. I can't remember a product like it. As far as reaction, no, no. Well, I know from my point of view, when Luke's going around doing the training, every time he's been into a dealer to show the staff, I'm getting emails from the dealer saying, "Right, when's mine coming?" Yeah. Basically, yeah. staff are trying all of them before yes. they even got to the shop. So, yeah. So, yeah, me too. In fact, so it's yeah. a game <laughs> yeah. so good. So yeah, so an amazing, amazing product. Volcamix again, mm. sold out everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Um, so they they are available now. Um, obviously, we have introduced some new countertop displays. So if you go into your local dealer, you'll see a really nice Volca display unit, which incorporates the Volca mix. So that's, uh, yeah. it's really, really, really cool. Uh, I'm finding the sync feature going down very well. Here yeah, because that was something that was people ask for that quite a lot on the Volcas. Mm. Oh, how do I kind of start them all at the same time? Yeah, so yeah. that gets around that problem now. It certainly does. And um, yeah. So, so yeah, cool little unit. So there we go. So, other news: we've got uh, an update, another update to something that came out last year. Something that myself and Luke put together, uh, a, a little piece of software for the PA4X called Osimo. See, I'm wearing a T-shirt today. Uh, so <laughs> we're doing an update. Uh, 1.2 is due at the end of the month. So obviously we updated 1.1 at Christmas, where we gave you a lot of Christmas registrations, etc. We've got a new one. A we new have. one. We've got Pete Shaw. Remember Pete Shaw from? Uh, for, he's been on a couple of episodes. He's done some work for us. He's got two different set lists this time: Ballroom Days yep. and PS Signature One. <laughs> so there <laughs> we go. Sounds so intriguing, indeed. Yeah. So it might it might mean there's more. If it's just could be. One. But they're yeah. coming at the end of the month. I so, am I am glad that you're wearing a t-shirt. Well, so I just wanted to get that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. But speaking of t-shirts, yes. Ah, well, nice there we segue. go. So yeah. we, a nice segue then into John's special t-shirt. Uh, no fake Frank. And that's because mm. the Zappa Family Trust has proposed doing a tour of Zappa music with a hologram of Frank. Amazing. But at the same time, they won't let Dweezil Zappa, Frank's son, tour under the Zappa Play Zappa mm. moniker. Absolutely wrong. And for those of us who were like Frank... Indeed. I'm, I'm 
covering up my big belly by, uh, <laughs> you know, promoting this no fake Frank. No, indeed. There's a hashtag there. there yes, is. there is. Yeah. There Probably is. Everyone needs exists, to check yeah. that out and support no fake Frank. Yes. And no fake analog. And that's why Prologue's so good. Yeah. I nice. love, love the way nice. you brought, uh, that, brought, brought it straight back, back in. There. Yeah. Um, so, um, any other exclusives that you're going to get? No, I'm only joking, John. I'm not going to pressure you. <laughs> well, I was going to tell you about the. N- <laughs> no, 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 I have to edit it out. I have to edit it out. I don't want to get you into trouble. I don't want to get you into trouble. But yeah. Can I mention it later on, though? Maybe? Coming you later can, this year? Yeah. Well, on camera or not? Or is it off, strictly off camera? Oh, you mean on a later podcast, I think he means. Right. Yeah. Definitely. So you can tell yeah. us now. We're just going to turn the camera and the, uh, the mics off now. There we yeah. go. <laughs> Ready when you are. Yeah, it's I don't think he's uh, going to fall for that no, one. No, it's a new. <laughs> right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, let's leave it there. Yep. Don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so yeah, so we've got uh, quite a bit uh, happening in stores at the moment. So you're still out doing uh, your training and tours. Yeah, and playing yeah. On the all sorts of things going on. Prologue, like I said, it's all over the place at the moment. So mm. PA one thousand yeah. now in stores. PA seven hundred now in dis- in stores. Of course, it's all happening. Yep, it's all it's happening all good. at the minute. So uh, we're going to have a bit of a break. Uh, and then we're going to come straight back with some chronology. Oh yes! So we'll uh, we'll catch you in a bit. Let's have a brew. Let's have a brew. Have a brew. <laughs> Welcome back, part two. So before we go into chronology, I've got my switch with me. Obviously, the uh, the hashtag uh, Get Adam Gadget has been trending on Twitter for the last three months. It's gone global, three years. It feels like, but yeah. John's here. It seems like the perfect time to ask. Uh, can I have a gadget? <laughs> and can you please organise that for me? I can arrange for you. There we go. And the only catch is that Andy told me it should be a limited time thing that runs out after a couple of months. <laughs> I, don't couple of minutes. That, I don't know if that <laughs> was... A couple of minutes, <laughs> God, can you imagine? <laughs> Just disappears. <laughs> no, we'll set you up as some kind of beta developer. There we go. Know. Fantastic. So, I'm all over that. So obviously, as soon as I get that, we will have an impressions on that. Uh, and I can now put my switch away and I don't need to bring it again until it comes out. So. Gadget is a phenomenal, oh, a phenomenal I'm piece so of excited. software. It's incredible. And, uh, and, and the fact that we've made it work for uh, Switch has, for all the markets where Switch is big, mm-hmm. such as Japan, it's been extraordinary the number of people who are waiting for Gadget. Yeah, it's yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I'm quite, I'm, I'm hoping it will go, because obviously we privately listen to a lot of game podcasts and all that kind of thing mm. i'm hoping it really appeals to that sector as yeah. well and, and we're gonna you know we've got connections haven't we with a one of our um, favorite podcasts and the minute yeah. it lands i'm on to them it's yeah. not just people on. who make game music though it's a it's a way of <coughs> sitting on a train going yeah, absolutely. on a long distance absolutely. To work and actually making music on the way to and from work oh, yeah, so I, accessible for everyone isn't yeah it? like the, the previous ones that have been released for the for the uh the ds when you look and you search online for what has actually been made on that, it's incredible. It's it's incredible. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Can't believe you're actually going to get We need to have another break. I need to go and have a ride out. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of guys missing the, uh, their stops on the train, though, aren't they? So hopefully yeah, there's nothing to come, yeah. come, come back to us on that. Yeah, oh, that's true. It, it, I'm yeah. so excited. It'd be great. I'm so excited. That's it's a great, very maybe. interesting thing on the Japanese trains, though, because I take the train to and from mm. work. They, they, people seem to fall asleep and then wake up at their station, and I have yet to find out <laughs> so, yeah. what the co- what, what I know happens. what that is because I used to do that. Oh, how do you? This do is it? the trick. So when you're on, right? Take this, and this is this is good. Just live gold. at the end of the line. Right, I'm going to give you this one. For me. <laughs> yeah. The tip is when you fall asleep on a train, you put your head on the window. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Right. You fall asleep on the train, and then what happens is when the train stops and the doors open, uh, and it goes into neutral gear or whatever it is. 
the, the windows vibrate so it wakes you up and then you go oh Oh, oh, I've got another five minutes yet, whatever. Then you go back to sleep again, and then that's how you remember. You wake up at the right stop. Oh, top ten. And if anyone else has any other theories about what it might be, please feel free to uh, get in touch as soon as possible. Seriously, I used to do that. I used to, I used to get two train, a bus, and two trains to work. Wow. And uh, yeah, they were long journeys. So I didn't have a switch then, so I right. used to sleep instead. <laughs> so anyway, what what we're doing, Luke? We're going to do a chronology. Have we got a jingle. We have. Let's, Let's dive in. Cool. Right then, what's the year? The year is 1999. Well, it can only be one product, but it could be a few, but we're surrounded by it, (laughs) so so we know what it is. It's a bit of a giveaway. It's a bit of a giveaway. It's obviously the Electribe, the cool Electribe. So it launched in '99. It was three hundred and forty-nine pounds at the time. I'm just going to play. So just where are you going? I'm just going to get my laptop. Okay. Thanks for coming in, Adam. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for your time today. So yeah, uh, that that same year, Korg itself uh, released the Chaos Pad, which we looked Amazing. at last time. Yeah. The Triton, and also the Oasis modeling technology in a PCI card. So like so brands okay within a brand. Year then, isn't it? Not bad. <laughs> not bad. Yeah. Exactly. And also other manufacturers were we had things like. The Axis Virus B, Echo S5000 Sampler, the Emu Pro- Protus 2000, nice kind of mm. uh, all-round module, Kurzweil K2600, a Native Instruments Reactor, so we start to see a few software guys coming in now. Wow, that was 1999. Yeah. Great. Great. Scary. Scary. Yeah. Roland XP30, uh, JV1010 and EG101. There we go. Remember that yeah, one? Yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah, that last time, the 101. That. Yeah. Weird product. Very strange. Uh, World of Q, nice synth. Uh, and then Yamaha had a few things as well. So they had the CS2X, the CS6X, the bigger brother synth, and then the RM1X, which is like a groove box type product. Um, Except nowhere near the groove box of the Electribes. No, not in the same league, unfortunately, or fortunately for us. Mm, yeah. um, so originally there were two models. So the first, very first one was called the ER1, and that was a drum machine, and it was red. Um, and uh, there was also the EA one, which was blue. Mm. So they were very much kind of a little bit more like the Volkers in that they were very specific. They did uh, specific jobs, so obviously a drum machine and then a synth. Um, and they worked really, really well together. Uh, so the ER1 was a rhythm synthesizer with a six part drum machine. And it had four analog model oscillators and four adjustable percussion samples as well. And it also has audio inputs, so you could actually feed your audio through it and kind of treat those as oscillators as well. Um, it has um, low boost and two ring modulators as well, and that gave it a kind of iconic sound because it could sound really dirty and gritty as well, which is why quite a lot of people kind of gravitated to it, towards it. Had some delay effects as well. Uh, then you had the EA one, which is the synth version. So that was an analog modeling synth and had two independently programmable mono synths with separate mono outputs. So it's actually really cool. So you could send your different tracks of your sequence, if you like, mm. through different outs to record as audio. So that was, that was really nice. And the analog modeling technology actually derived from the Z1 mm. synth, a monster synth. Um, it had effects mm. too, it had distortion, tempo delay, and a chorus flanger um, uh, unit in there. Uh, so both units had 192 preset patterns um, and 256 in total, and they were all overwritable, as well as being able to um, save 16 songs in there. And you could also, even at this stage, we had motion record on there, so you could record automation in there. So you could, uh, you know, add some real nice motion to the the sounds, uh, one parameter per part at that stage. Connections wide, they had an audio out, MIDI in and out and through, uh, and an audio input, of course, that was on the EA. One had one, and then the ER1 had two inputs, and then you had headphones as well. So that was really the very first step in this kind of Electribe journey. So what was it like at the time, John, as far as the reception to those? It was uh, completely, we, we thought it would do okay in a niche market. We were completely overwhelmed by mm. by the success. No one, no distributor had understood how wide uh, ranging the appeal would be. So there was a thing of, well, young and whatever the term you want to use, EDM, let's just say. Um, the idea that it had a variety of different dance music styles in there and you could program it and vary it that was all cool and we thought that's one demographic what we didn't pick was the number of 
uh, let's just say older musicians, professionals and amateurs, um, who bought it because it, it took them into a world they'd heard, they liked, but they didn't quite know how to delve into. And that that kind of programming on a Triton, O1W, or all the other synths that were around at the time, yeah. was was a difficult thing to do. And in fact, we have, we have many stories of people um, working in, say, the jingle industry who would go along to an ad agency, oh, we want something modern. And they actually go through different things on the various elect drives until... Until the ad agency director would say, the creative director CD would say, "That's it. That's the kind of feel I want." <laughs> and the musicians say, "I know what to do." Fantastic. So an older person kind of got relevant. It's a new world, obviously now with Ableton and <clears throat> yeah. all the other things you can do in software. But at the time, it was an unexpected bonus. We heard of people doing whole sets at clubs, actually doing real programming on the fly. Mm. You know, Brilliant. varying one pattern after another, the motion sequence that you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it, it was unexpected. And of course, because it sold so well, we had lots of people giving us input. Can you do other models? Can you do other? How about if you could do something, something? Which we'll get yeah. onto in a minute. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You've blown it. No, it's okay. Um, so <laughs> Again. <laughs> So this is, I've got a little audio snippet here um, of the EA1 and ER1 oh, I love together. Bits. So let's just have a listen. This is one of the demos, early demos. <laughs> Gives you a little bit of a flavour for what it sounded like. Yeah. So it just gives you a little flavour of what That's great, the kind yeah. of sounds we're talking about. So um, that obviously was quite a different kind of sound at that time. And like John was saying, it's a very kind of hands-on and immediate way to manipulate your patterns so and there was no learning curve no, no. exactly you, you would sound yeah. great immediately well that's the thing you see when i in 1999 i was in retail and i didn't sell high-tech products we sold keyboards and pianos and mm. organs and, and brass and woodwind traditional music stock shop and but when you got these products in they, they were so easy to demonstrate. They yeah. were so easy to sound good at an affordable price. So we did an absolute bomb, particularly mm. with you know what you'll come on to in a minute. And then from that, me, an organ player, ended up buying a Triton because of that. Yeah. It was my way in. Almost, yeah, yeah. Do you know oh. what I mean? A bit yeah. weird, but it, yeah. But that's that's honestly how it was. That's cool. Yeah. So what you were hearing then actually was the CD that Adam's got in his. Hand, yeah, which is the a, original, the original demo, demo CD. CD, and there's another one here which John was looking at, which is actually a joint one with Electribe and Triton. So when we cover the Triton, we'll be listening to some of those delights as well. Excellent. Um, so uh, in the year 2000, so just the next year, obviously, as John said, they must have been very successful. So Korg decided to expand the range. Mm. So we then had the ES one. So this was green, green and right. it was a sampler. So um, this was 429, so it was a little bit more expensive, but it, what you could do is record and store up to 150 samples on board. So that was 100 mono or 50 stereo, um, and 50 stereo, I should say, um, and 95 seconds in total, so not a great deal of time. But it was at 32K as well, so it gave it a kind of slightly grainier mm -hmm. character, and that's, again, what appealed to certain people who were using it. Uh, the sampling data was backed up to a smart media card smart media. remember those remember them. <laughs> yeah. uh, four megabytes to 64 meg um, and the unit could also read WAV files and AIFF files directly so you could just rip stuff on your computer and stick them into the unit so again that was an appeal obviously um, or you could just sample directly into the unit so I had a 12 part sequencer with nine samples and also a slice audio in and accent parts as well 53 factory samples built in 64 patterns 128 users and three factory songs, and, and again, up to 16 of your own songs. Um, you also could edit your samples on board, so you could truncate, you could normalize, you could time slice, like re recycle, so you could get a drum loop, and then you could slice it up automatically, and then put it, assign it to the pads. 
Um, it had 11 insert effects to choose from and a master effect as well, which is delay. And again, it had the motion recording there. So that was, again, a really great way to kind of add a little bit of movement to your patterns. So next came, and we actually have one here yes. in the studio, an EM1. There it is. So that came in 2001. And Adam was just playing around with this earlier, so he's going to give us a little bit of a live well, jam. Yeah, yeah. It's been about 30 <laughs> years or whatever it is since I've played one of these. I remember A11 being a good preset. Oh, I'll so start with that one. That one. It's so like this, a housey one. Yeah, go on. There you go. I'll have a bit of that. Oh, yeah. It's still relevant today, of course. It's looking at yeah, more than Yeah, it's just easy to, like, you know, just take stuff out of it and then Jump to turn the lights off. And then yeah, add, add, add some effects and then... You know, for someone who's used to playing boss overs on a, an organ, <laughs> you know, it was just, you know, it was so easy to, to do and Let's to demonstrate. Some of the patterns. Yeah. This was my love of bass. So it just, it's so easy to remix on the fly, I think that's what was a big appeal of the electrons. Like John was saying, in a club you could just have a load of patterns and then just, you know, play with them. First dissect them live. Okay. It was easy to do things like a drop. You yeah. didn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A bit of South NC front just there. That's <laughs> No, right next to the Ferris wheel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You got it. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so that was the M E M one. Uh that was from two thousand and one. What price can you remember what that was? That says three seven five. Three seven five. Does that ring yeah, a bell? Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. It does, yeah. And that one was black, by the way, for those of you yep. on the audio podcast. Um the reason I mentioned the colours because it does get a bit confusing later on because Core went a bit <laughs> different with their colours because they changed the different ones, but we'll get into that in a minute. So that was an eight-part drum machine and a two-part monosynth. That's mm. what you just listened to, the EM1. Um, so it had a 16-step sequencer in there. It was basically like combining an ER1, which is the, the drum one, and the EA1, the synth Together, one, into yeah. one unit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it had sample-based synthesis instead of analog modeling, uh, 144 drum sounds, 50 sampled synths, and it had an expanded motion record system as, as well, so you can actually record more parameters in there. Mm. Um, uh, it still had effects, uh, but no audio input on this one. That was one little difference. So then in 2003, Korg gave the whole range a bit of a refresh. Mm. And then we had the Mark II models. So we had the ER1 Mark II, which is red still, uh, that added a cross modulation effect and some new patterns and was redesigned. And um, the EA1 Mark II, that was the green. That, so that became green, even though it was blue originally. <laughs> and then the ES1 Mark II. The sampling one was green, but it became silver. So yep. that's why, because we had this conversation ages ago mm. about the colours, and we yeah, couldn't quite right, remember yeah. which was which colour. It's because we were I'm, right I'm, we were wrong. I'm yeah. well, no, I think the reason was is Luke. I don't know. I was more familiar with these, yeah, and I think Luke was more familiar with them. So we were kind of both right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we oh, put that one to bed you know, now. That's done. Yeah. Also, in that same year, we saw the EMX one and the ESX one, which we have here. If you're watching on video on the table, so these were brand new models and they were a lot more powerful um, and the whole look of them and the size of them were elevated and they're proper you know I rugged. love these I yeah. remember you had one of these so you? excited yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, brushed aluminium panel is beautiful isn't yeah. it so good. Just so good it feels so superb. solid and, mm. and it's got um, a valve that glows in it I mean I know you're going to get to that but <laughs> yeah. I've, I've dropped it now so it's yeah. there it's just oh, so yeah it does great. have um, a pair of valves in it it has 16 parts as well so you've got nine drum parts five synth parts and a drum accent and a synth accent part. Uh, it's got analog modeling and PCM inside, 207 uh, PCM drum sounds, so sample drum sounds, and 64 synth waveforms. Um, they had two vacuum tubes in there, which Andrew was just saying about, so that's, that, was called, that was called valve force circuitry. So it creates an analog tube circuit to add warmth and presence to your sounds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I have John's to gonna say something. No, I do want to say something, because I remember the whole discussion about those tubes, and, and I think it's a great credit to Korg and the engineers that they understood warmth and feel. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about dance music and groove and tight and patterns and quantizing and warmth and feel. And it's something that all the other people making, whether it was software or hardware, the, the nearest they got to feel was a groove function yep. but, or something. But this changed the sound. And it, it maybe it wasn't perceptible to the audience, 
but it was absolutely perceptible to the music maker. 100%. And so it made the music maker feel I'm involved in a more organic, real thing. And that it was they were phenomenally successful. Because of that, I think people really owned them and loved them. Yeah, you know? it was theirs, yeah. Um, Definitely. So we were talking about the EMX one and the ESX one. Um, yeah, so they were they came in 2003. Uh, they were 579 pounds when they right. came out, and they had I the tubes they in there. More than that. Yeah. I, with that. I thought mm. they were 699. Yeah, that's what. That's funny enough, the same price I had. I think that's just what they charged you. I think. You're, I think <laughs> yeah, you're special right. price yeah. for Adam. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and they had the valves in there as we were just talking about earlier. Amazing. Um, yeah. So just a couple more things on that. So they had in the early days the smart media storage again mm -hmm. so the old kind of format of storing for storage for samples and again cards compatible with 4 megabytes to 128 meg I mean you just wouldn't get cards no, that small no. these days would you so for that reason or partly for that reason Korg decided in 2010 to do a refresh mm -hmm. with the EMX1 SD and the ESX1 SD yeah. so they were refresh patterns as well it wasn't just an SD card slot they put on there they gave the thing a, whole, a complete overhaul and added loads of new patterns in there as well. Um, then in that same year, we saw Electribe, iElectribe for iPad. So this was uh, quite a groundbreaking app, and I think I'm right in saying this came out and they coincided it with the launch of an actual one of the iPads. The, the first iPad. iPad. Yeah. yeah. I so, was there, and we all had to sign a confidentiality agreement, really and the true. iPad was in a room literally with a chain. Wow. It was wow. in a it was in a case chained in a door that you needed a, a key that only certain people had. It was so under lock and key that, uh, all right, I'm vice president, of course I saw it, but m most of the staff were not allowed to know it was in the building. Wow. It was amazing. Apple amazing. was so secretive, but we were the first music app. And the app was number one in the charts for ages, wasn't yeah. it? Apparently, well, yeah. Being first in, in the music charts, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the still, only one, but yes, a lot, a lot of people <laughs> bought that. it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, and that really laid the foundation for Korg's legacy, I guess, for making apps because we're we're phenomenally successful at it now. Mm. So. Um, Okay, so visually, this app was actually a cross between the ER1 Mark II yep. and the EMX1, because it had like a valve in the mm. actual app, um, like a, a digital valve, if you like. Um, uh, yeah, so it looked really cool. But then in the next year, something even cooler came along, which is iElectribe for iPad Gorillas ed Edition. Oh, I love it. So what this was, was a basically a collaboration between Korg and Gorillas, so Damon Albarn and the rest. Um, and it featured 128 Gorilla sounds and 64 preset patterns that came directly from their album, The Fall. Uh, can I just say with that, what yeah. I love, and it, this kind of references the monopoly that we spoke about earlier, is I love the dedication and the time and the thought that goes into the presentation of the products. Absolutely, yeah. So, like, for example, <coughs> on the on that one, it had a pencil. Yeah, the chewed on, pencil. And, and on the, on the uh, monopoly one, there's the crease in the board and yeah. you know it's yeah. like they just got that extra so good. it's great um, and uh, that album The Fall they actually used the iElectribe to produce it so not the Gorillaz one but obviously the, the first Electribe mm. I like uh, Electribe um, and the album included the sample of Kato which was the founder of Korg saying Donkomatic which is the very first yeah. Korg product mm. so there's a sample of that um, and that apparently so Ian Bradshaw was telling me they found an old Korg video with him saying on it and approached Korg and said, can we sample this, please? And then we said, oh, we'll go on better than that and we'll actually get you to resample it using... The, the real the chairman. Real, the real deal. I remember yeah. this. So I do remember, you remember this, John? I remember yeah. Mr. Cardo practicing. Yeah. <laughs> he, because he took it really seriously. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to get the... Yeah. He wanted to get the pronunciation right. And that Gorillas app... Um, we worked out, uh, they were wonderful people, by the way, and we had a great relationship talking with them. And, you know, we tried to incorporate a lot of their suggestions and we agreed on a number that we were going to sell. We tripled it. Mm, they that. were so happy, first of all, because it was great exposure. And secondly, because it turns out a lot of people that really liked their music wanted to make music their way. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking tens of thousands. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well actually I've got something here that the Cork did something really nice. They offered the first ten thousand customers um, a cheaper price to buy it as well. So mm. that that was five ninety nine apparently at the time. So wow. that was a nice little gesture as well for, for people who were really into the gorillas. So 
I just think that's so cool. That thing, it's so good. And if you see any of the pictures, and um, I'll put some on the video version, it's not just actually the front of the app. The, you can the see back. the the yeah, back of it yeah, as well. Yeah. I don't know if you've got that there, Andy. Yeah. But um, next one. Oh, we've got a close up anyway. There you go. Hey, there we go. So that. you can see all like the broken valves and stuff at the back. So I like just the, love the it. electrical tape here as well. And yeah, the, yeah, the little pat test. Yeah, it's great. It's brilliant. Love it. So that was the iElect Tribe. Do you know the serial number on that? What did it say? R two D two. Really? <laughs> Seriously, I've never looked that before. That's cool. Isn't it? <laughs> That's sorry. So carry on. So good. So yeah, that was the iElect Tribe iPad Gorillas Edition. Then in two thousand and fourteen, we saw some new Elect Tribes. So um, they were given a complete refresh. Um, these were called the e e EMX two and the ESX two, uh, or just some people just call them EMX. Um, and they were available in two different colours. So you mm. had the grey and you yeah. had the black. So I think you've got some props there, Andy. We do. Yeah, I'm just going to go, yeah. go again. Yeah. Do you need a drink or anything while I'm... No, no, <laughs> no, you're all right. No, you carry all on. Right. So the grey one was the EMX. So that was the synth version. And then it's coming along the line here. <laughs> and then you've got the black version <laughs> as well. You'd be going to a game show. Yeah, he was, yeah. yeah. You just need a, like a sparkly frock on or something. Does he normally <laughs> wear a cap when he does this? It does, actually, oh, yeah, yeah, he's forgotten it. Sure, sure, just once, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the black one, yeah, so that was the sampler version. So it was a new, as you can see, a kind of new minimal look, um, but more power with 16 parts and 16 effects. So you've got an effect on every single part now, um, plus uh, a multi-effect send, which means you can have a send effect to apply to whichever parts you want. It also has a chaos pad built in, and the ability to directly um, export to Ableton as well. And lights. So, and, lights. and lights underneath yes. for the table, <laughs> which are great. Um, so the reason, again, I, earlier I was talking about the confusing colours is because then again in 2016, <laughs> we changed the colours again. <laughs> so we decided to go back to the original EMX colours. So EMX2 was blue and mm -hmm. ESX2 became red. Right. Go and get yeah, them. I think we've got those over there as well. Got, so got them all, we've got them all. We've literally got every electro we've ever produced pretty yeah, much yeah. in this room. And, uh, and they so upgraded this, the operating software, didn't they? And they put extra patterns in. And they did, like yeah. So they're given a refresh um, visually, but also sonically as well. There you go, there you go. So there, there they go. are. There they are. So, and yeah, I actually really like the look of these ones now. They've changed the colours. So these are the current models, the EMX2 and the ESX2. Great sounding uh, groove boxes and... Um, They've kind of gone down the route of making them a little bit more portable as well because they now run on batteries, so you can yeah. use them anywhere. And um, and like the Ableton integration is really cool as well if you're making beats like that. The design's a lot more. I don't want to say Apple, but mm. it kind of is, isn't it? You kind of recognise that form yeah. factor now. Not big, you know. There's lots of products like that. And it's sleek. And sleek it's and nice, minimal. Yeah. And it's just it really sounds well. So good again. Looks yeah. really good. Really, really good. Really modern. Yeah. So and the final, sorry, John. Did you mention the trackpad? Yeah, it's got the chaos pad built mm, in. Mm. Yeah. So that's, a, again, that's a new thing for an Electribe yep, as well. Yeah. So uh, the final one to really talk about is the iElectribe for iPhone, which is another different one again. So that's, um, there it is on the screen if you if you look watching. So um, that's kind of, again, based loosely around the, the look of the ER1. So, and again, brilliant sounding app. And... An Electribe on your phone. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. Isn't it? You wouldn't you wouldn't have thought or well, imagine that in nineteen ninety nine, would you? You really wouldn't. Definitely not. So a few artists that have used the Electribe over the years, Orbital, Cirrus, um Prodigy. Yeah. Uh, the Prodigy, uh, Crystal Method, Massive Attack, Enter Shikari, Chem Chemical Brothers. There's just loads of yeah. massive names there. I don't know if John's got any more to add. But you didn't give me a chance to research this. <laughs> no, right. no, 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 it's fine. We're not putting you on the spot. Sorry, no. Well, that. Prodigy did the Fat of the Land, didn't they, with the original yep. ones. So I remember that it, being a big yeah. thing at the time. Definitely. Uh, and the gig, uh, I don't know if they still do, but I've seen them in 20 years or whatever it is, but they used to gig with them as well, which mm. is cool. So, so there we go. There's the Electribe. Yeah. So what else happened in 1999? Before we go into that, I just want to just to say... How amazing was the Korg lineup in 1999? You know, we had the Electribe, we had the Chaos Pad, we had the Triton. Of course, I used to have a Triton. Andy still got a Triton. It's you going know, nowhere. Amazing uh, lineup. Have you got anything else? Did anything? The happen? very beginning of PA series. Of course, yeah. Oh, PA80. Yes. Yeah, oh wow, yeah. yeah. That's right. That started then. Oh, good times. Good, good times. times. 
So amazing Sorry. product. Have you got any any other stories about any of those products? The, and the Triton or the well, there, there's, you know, unfortunately, if we get, fans. if there is a bottle of red here, this just could go on for hours. <laughs> but give me one minute. But, uh, <laughs> the the Triton. I've got a very quick story about the Triton. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, uh, Mr. Carto was, uh, you know, at that point, I think late sixties, but he was out always visiting dealers and talking to distributors and talking to musicians. And he went to uh, a whole batch of dealers in one trip and was talking about what do you think the future is? And everyone said, workstations are dead. The future is soft sense. So forget workstations. We've been telling all the other companies the same thing. And Mr. Cardo walked out, got back to Japan and said, right, double down on workstations <laughs> because every deal is wrong. Unfortunately for other companies, they all stopped their workstation development. And they are yeah. pretty much stopped now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when the Triton came out, it was the only workstation. And all right, you may not use the sequencer on the on it, but the fact is that you can do some sequencing. And of course, the sounds were great, and it was the touchscreen. And you know, mm. we, we really refined the, the, the touchscreen operation from the Trinity. Mm. At one point, a few years later, we were 80% of all synth sales because everyone had stopped doing hardware development. They had actually shuttered the doors and were working desperately on how can we get software that's going to work, then to turn out and realize, wait a minute, a lot of people actually want to play. Mm -hmm. And so Triton, one of the reasons it's the, well, you know, in the top two or three ever hardware selling synths is simply because it just delivered exactly what people what wanted, needed, yeah, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and uh, um, it, it's... And in those days, you used to see them everywhere, didn't you, on stage? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. Everyone had one. Yeah, yeah, they were on every stage. They were on so many TV shows and movies as well because yeah. they were quick and easy, except they sounded fantastic. Theatre yeah. as well. Yeah. Theater, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Trinities as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I know we'll talk more about it, but I got mine when I, I went to go and buy a Trinity. Sorry, yeah, a Trinity for my 18th birthday. And on the floor in a box, not opened, one had just come through back in the day and went down there. I'd chosen that over a car. So <laughs> Triton came out Good of the choice. box, played it for the first time. And yeah. my dad sat there, just get, he was like, you're taking that. He, we couldn't really afford it at the time, but he saw the look on my face. He was like, that's yours now. And that got me into, well, I now work for Cork, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but that got me into the, the sort of the composition thing, the writing music. And it was all off of that experience. And I still remember it's, you know, in a, in a film where like an alien will come down touch the human's head and just goes and he, then he understands the universe mm. that was my moment I was like I understand the universe now this is it and that's what that did for me so it's well, huge was that before Amazing. you discovered women or <laughs> women still not found just another, <laughs> sure. that's yeah. another podcast isn't yeah. it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the final thing about the Triton that I would tell you is that we get requests on an almost daily basis for people who've looked at uh, Kronos for mm. example saying how can I transport my Triton presets into the Kronos? You know, it, the, the, that sound set was so popular with yep. so many yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, Jack Hotop, one of our secret guru genius sound developers, has actually done Triton sets for Kronos. Amazing. Yeah. We, we need these. <laughs> yeah. I think they're available on our <laughs> website. Yeah, they're on yeah. Chrome. Right. I've, I've yeah, yeah you can go for Chrome, Chrome, which is brilliant. Mm. Oh. Chrome. Shadow um, of the Beast. Yeah. Amiga. Yes. Happy yeah, days, yeah. happy days. <laughs> so there we go. So 1999. So do we need uh, do we need to reset before we go into 1999? Reset. It was you a know. good year. Yeah. Go back in time. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you want to? Is this just so you can get the jingle ready? Yeah. Well, Luke's doing the jingle ready. Do you want to reset the old camera? Okay. It's a okay, pretty yeah. important yeah. year. I have a sixth sense about yeah. that year. Yeah. Hey, hey. See what you've done there. See what Very you've good. done. It's great having John on, isn't it? <laughs> right then. Let's yes. do it. 1999. 1999. Have you got the jingle? I've got time? it. I've got it. It's, it's actually no, it's actually it. the right one. Oh. Winner. Come on, then. 1999. So, obviously, we've done 1999 a million times, so we won't <laughs> kind of go over it, uh, 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 but obviously, John's here, so you might have a different view of 1999. You'll have a different spin on it, maybe. For me, it was all Furbies. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, remember them, them toys, Furbies? I've told strange. the story, anyway. Yeah. Everybody wants to Friday. <laughs> uh, so, 1999, of course, saw things, the sixth sense, as uh, John mm -hmm. said before. Yeah. Toy Story 2, 
uh, The Matrix, mm. probably one oh. of the greatest films of all time. One of the most influential films, if you think about future filmmaking, mm. Matrix Absolutely. is it. Yeah, it's, Some of the it's, techniques they used. And, and one of the best advertising campaigns ever, because I don't know if you remember, but here in the form. UK, it was just, what is The Matrix on the side of every bus yeah, yeah. in the country? Really? That was the whole advert. Yeah. Did you have well, the phone? Did out. you have the... Oh, the old the, Nokia... The, the Nokia 60 flip down oh. 69, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. No, I, I did. I just had a I cup was, with string yeah. in it. But yeah. no, I was, you I were was Neo. Neo. Yeah. I was yeah. Neo, yeah. Did you have a black jacket as well? No, I didn't go that far. <laughs> um, I couldn't pull it off. Couldn't pull it off. Uh, but just slip it on. Other, other films, The Mummy, uh, The World Is Not Enough. I'm sure I've told you the story of my friend being in The World Is Not Enough. Have I told you that? Yeah, I think I've told you that. My friend was in that. I don't think you have. Have I not? No, no. no. Well, that's probably one off for off the podcast, but yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> paid an absolute fortune for driving a Jeep. He drove a Jeep and said, uh, yes, Mr. Bond. And that's what he said. That was his line. And he got a fortune for Brilliant. it. Uh, More to the point, he got bragging rights of being in a James yeah, Bond yeah, film. Yeah, which yeah. I still, I still perform. Most today. of us would give, you know, I body did, parts uh, to be in. So. Tread the boards <laughs> with Colin McChrystal. If you're listening, hello. Uh, Austin Power, the sequel. I won't say the name because it's a family show. American Pie, of course. Uh, South Park, great film. I love the music in South Park. If you remember, yeah. it was all orchestrated. And it was it's phenomenal. Cool. Popular musicians of the year, Lenny Kravitz. Uh, of course, it was the rise uh, of Britney Spears. Yeah. Uh, Hit me, baby, one more time, and all that. You've forgotten a very famous film that came out. What? Star Wars. Star Wars, episode one, The Phantom yeah. Menace. Oh, Pod racing. Good. Second mm. worst Star Wars film. Oh, come film. on. Yeah. No, no. Come what? on. Liam Neeson <laughs> in it. It was great. Yes, there was midi chlorians, and yes, there was a little annoying kid who still goes through the trauma of that. You may think you're a Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks was yeah. good. Yeah. Hang on. Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this yeah. alone yeah. could should wipe years off someone's <laughs> <Yeah>. life. <laughs> really. And do you know that this is in the mm, early days good, of the he internet? Was that. <laughs> someone someone got hold of uh, the the Phantom Menace and edited it out every Jar Jar Binks yeah. scene, posted the film online with a message to 20th Century Fox saying, "See, you don't need that <laughs> character." And Fox was like, "Yeah, yeah, just get it down. We've got the point." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that would be a better film. Oh, definitely. back when Star Wars films were a travesty when they came out, eh? Anyway, <laughs> moving on. S Club are 7. Nice. Uh, uh, Whitney Houston. <laughs> Mariah I Carey. love the... Yeah, I do. I'm with Last you. Last Jedi. Yeah, I, I'm her. with you there. I'm Absolutely you. fantastic. Yeah, it was no. great. Pearl Jam, of course. <laughs> uh, Eminem, <laughs> The Offspring. Shania Twain. Uh, popular television of the time. <laughs> Simpsons. One Foot in the Grave. Uh, Beverly Hills 90210, X-Files, ER, Friends, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, South Park, of course, Teletubbies. Oh, great uh, film. I knew you were going to say that. Yep. Uh, Charm, Dawson's Creek, Sex in the City, The 70s Show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Is that when it started? I don't right. know, but it was popular at that time. Right. Do you know uh, Chris you Tarrant, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Films, mm. Deep Blue Sea, which... T- Ties into what we were talking about. The Meg, the trailer, trailer for The Meg. Have you seen that, John? Yeah, there's a new film coming out with Jason Statham called The Meg, and the trailer released this week. I, I reckon, I recommend you watch the trailer. It's very okay. good, very good. Sheldon. and The Green Mile. It's a megalodon. Have you seen I the trailer be. for Solo? The I have. Solo yeah. Story? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I tell you what, I'm excited. I'm. I'm that that looks like a good Star Wars. It does film, look. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. 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 It does be nice might be as good as have Last Jedi. The, <laughs> have you seen the? Is it the? There's one. There's an even more recent one. Was it last week? Have you seen the latest, latest Solo. one? Yeah. Yeah, the no. two minute one with the just Chewbacca out. and the female Chewbacca, and people yeah. are wondering who it is and all really? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the is the, the Chewbacca in the film gonna be actually Chewbacca, or does he oh. get killed and replaced, and that is Chewbacca? Oh, it's all like that. So Chewbacca old, could be a lady after all these years. No, no, no. There's, there's <laughs> Chewbacca's there, but is there's a, like a, a lady Wookie? And have you heard about this? They're doing the the film between the Last Jedi and what the last one is, and it's um, not Mary Poppins. What's her name? Princess Leia. Sorry, <laughs> with um, Dick Van Dyke doing this whole musical yeah, scene. Yeah, at the yeah, end. It's yeah, gonna yeah. be yeah. very good. It's gonna be good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Worth a watch. Definitely. definitely well, I'm just leaving drinking <laughs> during the breaks. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just leaving the, uh, the, the silence to insert <laughs> applause. There. Oh, that's uh, the new uh, horror film, The Quiet. Uh, what's it called? The Quiet Zone. The Quiet Time. Oh, the whole right. point about the film is no one talks because the the monstrous killing that's force right. is attracted to sound because yeah, yeah. it's blind. I've been listening to a podcast. Oh, so like people that. have been uh, uh, at the test previews have been saying you can't eat, you can't drink, you can't talk because 
Mm. It's so silent, and the the tension is unbearable. Yeah, that sounds silence. really hard yeah, work yeah, to try and get yeah. through, isn't it? It does. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah. It, Although yeah. you know, I've been on drive home with my wife occasionally with that sort of silent treatment. <laughs> <after the summer>. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. That's just the earplugs, but yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Nineteen ninety nine. What a year! It's a good year. Fantastic year for films. Was it Fight Fight Club? You said yes. Yeah, Fight Club as well. Yeah. Fantastic year for films. What have we got next then? Next, we've got uh, Gear Goggles. But before ah. we go into Gear Goggles, and obviously, seen as John's come all, all the way over from uh, Australia and Japan, Japan just to be with us today, no, for no other reason whatsoever. That's the main reason you're here. Yeah, yeah, obviously. It's obviously, let's let's talk a bit more about Prologue, Volca okay. Mix, because we've not had, you know, uh, we've not been with John since uh, they've been released, so. What do you want to say? What have, we we had, have we had any positives, negatives? Well, we did actually? go. We did have a read out through those comments, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Did time. you see that, John? We read the YouTube comments. I watched the YouTube. I listened to the podcast, and mm. I heard the comments, and I've seen it. Some of them online, mm. and there's a hardy band of renegade rebels. Yeah. All four of them leading the crusade. <laughs> <laughs> all talking to each other on forums. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. trying to convince the world that you know, no, it's wrong because they didn't put in every spec known to man. Mm. And um, you know, we've had people, you know, contacting called passionately saying, but you left out this esoteric feature, all these features, and it's so important. And, and we were saying it's a performance synth. It's about the sound. It's about the playability. It's very easy user interface. Um, and, you know, when you buy a Strat, it doesn't have humbucker pickups and single coil. Mm. The Strat's a Strat. The Les Paul's a Les Paul. SG's an SG. Things are, you don't have to have every feature in one keyboard. And that's been difficult, I think, for a lot of people to mm. understand. Mm. Um, and there was one thread that uh, I was reading on the flight over. Uh, and what was interesting is that the people saying, guys, I have finally bought one. It sounds fantastic. <laughs> you know, and listen, I, I don't know where all the negativity is coming from. I have one in my studio. It is the most beautiful sounding synth or blah, 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 whatever it is. But it's funny how once people actually play it, yeah. forget about the YouTube uh, clips or the comments and the, the spec sheet. How does it sound? Mm. You know, it's... And, and so... Um, the, the reaction uh, you were saying that you're doing these sessions in store where people mm. come along to um, internationally where product specialists have been taking prologue to dealers and meeting end users once people hear it and then they come up on stage saying have you done something with the EQ or their effects that's it and you put on a set of headphones and you can see people kind of going oh my this is it this is, this is what I was after yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's what we promised we never said it had every technical spec ever imaginable for an analog synth mm. what it is is a really great polyphonic analog synth but with this digital oscillator which oh, you've yeah. been talking about and we should so say good. that the sdk the software developers kit is going to be available at the end of april and i should just quickly say this is not for end users no and we are going to have something it's going to be on github so it's not even going to be on the Korg website. It's for developing guys, or developing people, should I say. And when you download it, you have to acknowledge there's no support. So we're not doing it for users to be able to develop oscillators. It doesn't load in PCM. That was never what it was about. No. Um, you've got to have some kind of knowledge of C++ or you're lost. You're not yeah. going to get anywhere. But the fact is you can do your own oscillator, your own modulation effects. I mean, think about that. It's incredible. That's kind of incredible. pretty awesome. damn cool. And the number of developers who've contacted us saying, please get, you know, let me know when it's available. We believe um, people are going to be able to buy or get somehow bespoke oscillators yeah. just for you. Well, that's the best thing. Isn't and you're going to be able yeah. to that's say amazing. to a developer, yeah. this is what I'm after. And then it's not for sale to anyone else. So, you know, in Hollywood, Hans Zimmer and those guys, they've got developers that are working on custom mm. stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. This is now going to be available for the, you know, uh, you know, musicians. Fantastic. Amazing. I mean, I mean, Volker Mix, the only one I've had, <laughs> was like, oh, well, you can buy a, a, a mixer for 70 quid, 90 quid with more channels. And it's like, oh, amazing. Well, that's great. Go and buy one. Yeah. This product obviously isn't for you. Yeah. There's so many Volker users that have, um, you know, they have custom made stands or they have, they love the Volker form factor. They love the fact that you can sync. 
And yeah, it's just an amazing product that follows that Volker family. And those guys don't want a little no. mixer with no. B or Erringer attached to it, frankly, <laughs> no, do they? They want, that. they want their yeah, Volker. And it's you know? too big and, you know, it's just, I think it's a great addition. To but it, the, but uh, the fact that the mixers are a performance exactly. instrument as well, yes. nothing else is. Nothing I mean, you, else could, is. You, could, you can tweak it, but, it, you know, that's been built for that very purpose. But it's so. made specifically for the Volkers. It's got the right inputs and outputs on mini jacks it's got the sync the power supply. it's got the power yeah. supply power distribution that alone is just like mm. people have been asking for that so yeah. and it handles three volkers there are more than yeah. three volkers on the market yeah. we know that there are people who wanted every volker to go through a mixer and there is, what's the name of that company that's uh, there's a few actually vixen isn't there vixen, that, vixen. Is one, that's great if you want that go and get go it it's it. an extra yeah, yeah. 100 something yeah, yeah. euros or something but we made Volker Mix for people who have one, two, or three Volkers, not for the guy that's got everything. That's okay. Majority of people don't have six, mm. don't have five, don't have four. The majority of people have three, two, or one. So, and again, the reaction to Vulcan Mix has been great. People love the, the sound quality, mm, the yeah, performance yeah. features. It does what the average Volker user wants it to do. So, again, we didn't decide to design it for the extremist. We mm. designed it for the average average person. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm. Well I'm said, glad John. it's selling through. Thank you. Yes. No, no, no. That, that, that. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're very, very well received. Very well received. So, I think before we kind of uh, get on to like the final kind of stuff, we've got gear goggles, of course, to come, and we've got uh, downloads. I just want John to um, do us a little uh, something uh, special. Um, All right, I'll take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we uh, receive regular iTunes recommendations and reviews and we thank you very much for that everybody but we've had reader mail this month we have we've had two we've had some reader mail As in so post. don't forget you can get in touch yeah. with us at microcast at korg.co.uk or of course we're all on Twitter Adam Korg UK Andy Korg UK or Korg Luke so we've actually not only received a letter we've received a present oh wow <laughs> and I want uh, I want uh, this is very John exciting. to open it for us and oh, to wow. read read uh, the uh, letter so I'll go and grab it now hang on is it ticking <laughs> no I don't think couldn't so couldn't hear it before yeah would you I'm just going to leave the room though wow so I think as a little bit of background though we should read the original review that yeah, it's linked yeah, to shall I do that is there any chance you can try and do this in the voice of Morgan Freeman so that's, that's the, the letter nope. that we've received, and I'm wondering if, Andy, you could pass, nope. that, pass that to John right, when, okay. we, when we get to... Uh, <laughs> even <laughs> even God gets Morgan Freeman to do the voiceovers now. So obviously, we received a review a few uh, months ago that we read out on the podcast, which went like this. So this was the original review from Talonthorn. Oh, it's yeah. a five-star review on iTunes, and it says... Sublime from beginning to end, thus far each episode has been on par with opening a box of Jaffa cakes <laughs> to find Lady Lux bestowed the amazing seventh Jaffa. <laughs> Always brings a smile on the walk to the studio or even rewiring a studio or live rig. Hope to see many more. For now it'll be a YouTube thing as well as Legends of Told, as well as hearing them. Also bonus marks for not making a one plus hour advert in cheeky disguise of something else. So there we go. So, so it was, was a lovely original one. review. So obviously yeah. we read that out on the podcast. And uh, not only is he is he uh, got in touch, but we didn't read. He's found our address. Yeah. He's bought something. He's put it in a box. Spent a fortune to send it to him, and he's written us a little letter. So I'm just wondering if you could uh, read that for us. Okay, this is a genuine letter. From this is a genuine letter <laughs> from a, a listener. Extraordinary. <laughs> Dear Microcast, I hope you find my message well. I really am happy you found my review so amusing. I honestly didn't think it would really be read out on the show. You've all been oh so amazing to listen to. Seeing as you enjoy a snack with your brew, it's obviously a crime to not include the Jaffa Cakes I mentioned in the <laughs> review. Hopefully you unanimously agree they're amazing. Keep, keep on the good work. Again, really looking forward very much to future episodes and new stuff. Now there's one thing. Star Wars Episode Eight. Just going to say not too chuffed. They offensively dropped like every plot point they set up and had us talking about for two years. No wonder he had trouble with the film. <laughs> <laughs> Winning my top Star Wars list 
is currently Rogue One. Very good film, I thought. Next stop, Solo. Yes. There you okay. go. Okay. So I thank you for taking the time to read my letter. Hope you enjoy the gift for the Jaffa eating try tactfully removing the orange juicy center. It's the best bit. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint, by the way. I'm not on anything. If you didn't like The Last Jedi, that's up for <laughs> doubt. Clean as a bean, as they say. You're fine. Just how do they say, mad or a little crazy, insanely yours, the Jaffa reviewer. I hope you get the lucky seventh Jaffa in one of those boxes. So there you go. Wow. wow. So wow. I think you'd appreciate that, Mr. Talonthorne. That, uh, <laughs> that this, John this has is actually read out your letter. There's this the box. Is this Was this sent to me because I think The Last Jedi was great and some people don't <laughs> yeah, understand yeah, it? No, no, oh. I think, it, I think, uh, I think you mean Talonthorne everyone else? Will, uh, would appreciate that you've <laughs> oh, Oh, look his at this. Look his, at that. And he's actually sent us a box of Jaffa, Jaffa cakes. cakes. Look at this. Is this a real? <laughs> this is real. Yeah. This is a, yeah. We used to roll these down the cinema. You know, the Jaffas yeah, yeah, would go yeah. rolling down the <laughs> aisles of the cinemas. Have something to do when you're watching The Last Jedi, I suppose. Well, okay. <laughs> so, there <laughs> so there we go. So you can get in touch. Microcast at Microcast. I'm so excited. Watch Jaffa off. cakes. Uh, <laughs> Microcast at what is it? Marcus <laughs> at core.co.uk. So please get Correct. in touch. We will read out your letters. Obviously, they won't be read out by John. So our talent phone was... Uh, Why don't you it? add something to this? Now, I'm just making this up. I haven't thought about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For Nintendo Switch oh, don't, don't users, do maybe, we can, <laughs> maybe we can arrange one other copy of Gadget. There you go. For a Nintendo Switch user who... Who wants to get into gadget? You heard it yes. here first. Right, let's do it. Perfect. So on the launch, do we know? Well, we don't know. We just know spring. It's coming stage. very soon. It's coming very mm. soon. So if you send us an email so to microcast at uk, tell yep. us why. Yeah. You should get that code, and, and we'll see who wins. Yep. I'll give you the one I was going to give Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm entering. <laughs> So yes, so there you go. Fantastic. So you can win gadget for Switch. So how's that? So yes, so we've also been in contact with someone else, Luke, haven't we? Who's that? Uh, like to see. <laughs> oh yes. Now he's a really amazing guy. Actually, got a really good uh, channel on YouTube called Oscillator Sync, mm. and he does lots of really cool videos. He's done some on monologue, like on sound design and stuff like that. And he's also made this amazing uh, Volker FM patch editor. So you can edit your patches. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and he sent us a track, which he's done exclusively on the Volker Kick, which you're going to actually play at the end of the podcast Wicked. as well. Fantastic. So, yeah, if you just go to... The easiest way to find him is just go to YouTube, find his channel, Oscillator Sync. He's got all the links for all his mm. software on there. And do check them out because they're, they're stunning. Yep. So. so there you go. Yeah. So we'll more, t- more of that later. So we'll have a bit of a break and then we'll come back with uh, gear goggles. Yes. Right. Okay. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. So, we're going to go on to a new section now called Gear Goggles. But before we do that, I'm quite conscious that John has to catch a, a train. You're a busy man. I'm off to the airport, in yeah, fact. I'm terribly sorry to oh, no, hey, Just you even being here is incredible. It's and, been uh, great. great. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. And, and obviously, I'd love to have you on again next time. So, I hope you, everybody joins me in thanking John for uh, being involved. Okay. And being such a Anything else that you need? Well... Think about it, yeah. and next time I'm in the UK, we can add it to the yeah, list of sure, things. Yeah, Definitely. yeah. Well, Definitely. it was to be honest, it was just gadget switch, and you've sorted that. So <laughs> my life Winner. is now complete. <laughs> but he's just giving it away in the competition, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. So no, I love the fact this makes his life complete. It yeah. does. <laughs> it does. 
By the time I he leave, gets home, his wife's going to be saying, I, I'll tell you who makes your life complete. I, I lead <laughs> such a simple life. Uh, no, it's uh, something I've very much been looking forward to. So again, okay. thank you for your, for your Sorry time. I've got to run, in jo- but I will be listening. Yep, thank you very much. And don't forget, yes. Norfolk Frank, follow it. Yes. Support, support the cause. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Right, so let's move on. So we've got a jingle. We have. Let's do it. This is it. So we start off, we've got Rick Benton on a gold Kronos with Magnum. Mm. Uh, Wes Bailey, the keyboard player for Moon Taxi. Uh, he played Kronos in the Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty cool. Quite a big gig. Herbie Hancock uh, on a Kronos. Working on a new album with Kendrick Lamar, Wayne Shorter and more. Nice. Um, Reverb.com. Uh, done a series of videos uh, on the uh, Monopoly. Uh, you can find that on the Reverb.com YouTube channel. Uh, new sounds. Well, I, I, did we find out a link for this? If anybody that's got a King Korg out there... There are some new sounds available by Geosynths. It was actually on Sonic State, so I yeah. think you just search that. That's Sonic right. State. So if you just search for Geosynths, King Korg, you'll get some free sounds for King Korg. Speaking of King Korg, Rachel K. Collier, of course. Nice yep. segue. Uh, is currently <laughs> in India on a, she is. on a King Korg. She's doing some good... I, I was actually helping her the other day. Name drop. Pro- pro- uh, well, she sounds, just wanted some help, yeah, just programming no, some I'm sounds. Sure, yeah. Basically, she was using the King Korg and another synth. Yeah. But she wanted to simplify a rig and said, well, why don't you just use the split on the King Korg and then you've got two synths in one. Uh, and she was like, oh, brilliant. So, yeah, just helped to do that. And she, she's well away now. Yeah. When's, she, when's she coming on the show? We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. Okay. It could happen. Uh, also, yes. from our eagle eye listener, uh, Dean, hashtag DC, yes. spotted Sam Smith was doing a, it was on BBC Breakfast and he was doing like a stage walk. Mm. With a presenter saying, "This is where I'm. This is I stand is, on this is, fan." Is and this I do a stage this. walk? Now we're on video. Yeah, yeah. we're on video, <laughs> and I stand on the fan when I get hot, and then I sing, and then I do stay with me. all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as he walked past the keyboard rig, all you could see was a chord chrono. Yeah. So that was that was really there cool. It is. Uh, was so then we had uh, Charlie Puth on a grand stage. He mm. seems to be uh, flying that grand stage flag at the minute. He does. Uh, Charlie's using it everywhere. Uh, Adam Wakeman uh, on a prologue. We think. Yeah, he Ozzy. just picked up his prologue the other day from the office, so uh, he's taking on it on the, tour. the new Aussie tour. Yeah. Uh, Sam Bosch, he's got an SV1 and a prologue, and he's done a video about writing a song within a song. We've been tweeting about that on uh, Korg UK, so you can find that out. Quite intrigued to see what that actually means. Yeah, yeah. I, haven't, I, haven't, well. I, haven't, I haven't watched that yet. No. Uh, between the Buried uh, and me, uh, Tommy is playing the Chrome, which is cool. And the last one, which really got me, Zach Wilde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, What's Zach, Zach Wild, the playing? Zach Wild, playing on a Chrome, really, with Black Label Society. I don't know what to say about that. That's there we go. They did check it out. Wow, we okay. tweeted it. You wouldn't gossip it. It's, on, it's it. on the internet. Uh, so yeah, so we um, we've got one last thing. Yeah, in Giggles, which that. is a bit of a special. So the other day, uh, Dua Lipa were rehearsing just down the road in Bedford. And actually, our one of our drum guys here, Martin, he was down there because they're using, I think, Peisty cymbals and Vicforth uh, sticks and stuff like that. But they're also using a Korg pad control. Right. So we got a nice little interview with him. Oh, amazing. Right? Yeah, talking about how he used it. So let's have a quick listen to that. Fantastic. And for those on video, we got a little bit of video footage as well. So here we go. Here he comes. Hi, my name is William Bowerman, and I am musical director for Dua Lipa and some other artists too. We are here currently at uh, Millennium Studios in Bedford doing production rehearsals for our UK arena tour. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit about how we use the Korg pad control in our, in our setup on stage. Um, we currently have two of them. Uh, our keyboard player plays one on stage using it as an instrument for different samples we have running and also our playback tech has one off stage and they use it as a song controller to start and stop different uh, backing tracks on our uh, laptop at the side. The one on stage we use, um, we cut up and we use just as the MIDI controller straight into Ableton into using the inbuilt drum racks 
um, and we use it for anything that kind of can't be recreated on a keyboard or like piano sounds, anything we recreate, we recreate and we, we play them, but any particular sounds with a lot of characteristics or any vocal chops or just anything that we feel we want the exact sound from the record, we use that and we cut that up um, into drum racks and we have that running for him to play. As the song goes on, we do different, different chains and the automation happens so he can use the same um, uh, 16 pads to, you know, when the sounds change underneath his hands, so he gets 32 or 64 or whatever to be able to, to, to play from in that way. Um, we love that because on stage we also use the XY uh, parameter on it. And there's some things which in the set we hadn't thought of doing and when we were playing in sound checks and rehearsals and kind of mucking about on it, we were playing the samples with the right hand and then using the XY controller to pitch them. And it's something that we haven't been able to do and hadn't really thought about doing until we actually had the controller in our hand, literally in our hands in front of us. Um, and it's a part of the set we've, we've, now, we've now had for, you know, a couple of years that we've been doing in that song now. I kind of can't really imagine that song without that in. It's not on the original recording, it's something we've added and I can't, I can't hear the song without hearing that little pitch sample in there. So we use that on stage for that and we've had that since since day one really with Dua Lipa, um, which is about two and a half years ago, we brought those, I bought two for rehearsals. We ended up just using one on the stage and then we gave the other one to our playback tech. Um, it's a really good solid controller for the side for starting and stopping songs. I control most of the songs from stage but then there are some moments in the set where it's just Dua accompanied by either a guitar or a piano and I'm not on the stage to uh, control the songs and loop. So our playback tech has it labelled on the stage like uh, be the one intro uh, genesis top of the song which is like this and we map it to just as a MIDI control the MIDI notes sending out to our to our laptops and we split the MIDI signal to all four laptops that we have on the stage. Um, for me I've just I've never had any problems with them and that's on a really boring level is why I use them. I've used a lot of different MPCs and different controllers like that but I just these are the same ones we have we've had for two and a half years and therefore, because of that, you know, on any new gigs I'm, I'm doing currently, and an artist who's also on this arena tour called Coltrane, um, who I am the musical director for, he now has three of them on stage. We have one as a show controller, exactly the same way we do, and the keyboard player and the guitar player both have them for any particular sounds that we want cut up. So it's, a, it's a, kind of every show I do now, it's, it's, a, it's a big feature in there because they're just reliable. They're reliable, they've got the XY controller and for me personally it's just a solid piece of kit 16 buttons on with not much that can go wrong and in a live environment where there is there's absolutely no room for error it's the most important thing for me that it's just going to turn on every day work and just be the same every day basically so that's why i use the controllers on stage well there you go that's a bit of a <laughs> ringing endorsement yeah, you could say so, that yeah, yeah. Thank you for Martin for getting that yeah. amazing interview. It's very cool. Good man. And for those of you watching mm. our video, it would be cool. Mm. You'll have seen all the products and they've got some nice shots of them using it on stage and yeah. stuff. So, so yeah. that's gear goggles. So yeah. great on this one. Yeah. So, Andy. Yes. <clears throat> if I owned a piece of Korg gear. Yes. Or <laughs> gears. Ge uh, ge gears. Multiple what, gears. Multiple gear. Gear, I. Article, no. Articles. <laughs> product, products. Products. And I wanted to, you know, see what was available to, to download for that particular product. Yes. Where mm. would I go? I'm so glad you asked. I really am. <laughs> Hang on, let me just see what you didn't write down for me. Um, <laughs> it is www.corg.com forward slash us, US, forward slash US. Yeah. I'm going to start again. Ready? <laughs> www.corg. <laughs> listen up. www.corg.com. Is my mic gone? No, this is going really well. Still there, still there. Shall I do it? <laughs> www.corg.com um, forward slash US forward slash support forward slash download. So it's that easy. Corg.com forward slash US forward slash support forward slash downloads. So this month is a pretty special month. Uh, and I'll tell you why when Andy passes me my sheet back. Uh, because we've got some pretty. I'll um, do it under the table. So got, yeah, so shall we have a jingle while this is. Uh, well, well, yeah, here we go. So, this month, <clears throat> there's a lot going on. 
So for those of you that have got a PA300, PA600 or a PA900, there's some new operating software Ooh. available. PA300 is now updated to OS version 2.1. You can now sample edit on a PA300. Uh, compatibility with the Vox V860 volume pedal and curve presets for the volume expression pedal. The PA600 and PA600 QT update to operating system version 2.1. Compatibility with the Vox V860 volume pedal and the curve presets for the volume and expression pedal is a theme coming. PA900 to upgrade to operating system 1.3. Compatibility with the Vox V860 volume pedal and curve presets for the volume expression pedal. So there's some new update there for products that, like the 900, don't, they're not even available anymore. So and how much incredible. are they? They're all free. How, free. how much uh, free? free? Wow. Not only that, Cross 2. Big update for Cross 2. So Cross updates, Cross 2, system update to version 1.1.0. And the cross editor plugin editor, which I'll I'll come to in a minute. So we've got support for the cross two editor and plugin editor, uh, load dot ksc dot kmp and dot ksf sample files, pad sampler, uh, export to WAV and ksc. We've got uh, real time KSC. controls for vocoder improvements. So th those are just a few improvements there to cross. But not only that, the cross two editor and the plugin editor version one point zero point zero is now out there. So the Cross 2 Editor and Cross 2 Plugin Editor are applications for Mac and Windows that allow you to edit the Cross's program, combination, drum kit, arpeggiator pattern and global settings as well as a sequence of mode sounds and effects for multi-timbral use. The Cross 2 Editor is a standalone editor. So yeah, check that out. And people have been waiting for that as well, yes, so it's good. for a long that's time. Really nice. yeah. They've been Talk really about shouting yeah. about that, so that's yeah. something that's really good that that's now Did you say there. sorry as well, you can now export WAVs? That you've sampled on the cross. Is it, was that one of the updates? Because I don't. Uh, is it KSC and WAV? Because that's, that's. I thought you nice. said KFC. No, pad yeah. sampler export to KSC and WAV. Oh, you can. Okay, that's good. Mm, yeah, that's that's nice good. Tool. Excellent. Um, Chrome version 1.0.4 now available. Now, I've seen mm. on the forums people are going, well, what's it do? Doesn't matter what it does. <laughs> um, it kind of does, though. It, you'd know what it does if you knew what it did because you'd have had a problem. Yeah. So I think it's bug fixes. Yeah, they should tell us for once. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Can we'll tell them. Yeah. KR55 <laughs> Pro. It's not even out yet. Version 1.1 now available. Awesome. Uh, and I was then, playing with one of these the other day and it all right. just sounds They're great. Aren't they? I'd really like to. Can we maybe get one in the next podcast? I think next, next podcast we'll have a bit of a jam with it, maybe, yeah. or something because yeah. some of the grooves are just so. It's real sounding. It's the, the, there's little hi hat rolls and stuff you would mm. never ever be able to. And little snares, it's very it's clever. Yeah, very clever. Cool. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, and then lastly, but not leastly, because it's awesome. Monologue Sound Pack Volume Two, um, Dutch Bass. Yeah, I need to check this out. Yes, I've not listened to it yet. So it's going to be rather fat, one would imagine. So so that's that, and yes. uh, and then that's that's it for downloads. So it's it's a hefty month. <laughs> it's yeah. a hefty month for downloads. downloads. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm worried about the um, the last Jedi comments now because John was sitting right next to me. He was smiling, but there was that look in his eye of like, yeah, you smile now. <laughs> you wait till the camera's off. But he was punching you at one stage. Yeah, there was it? that. Yeah. Well, yeah, if we just right. give it a few five minutes, uh, it'll have gone for his uh, train. His train. So that's true. I just, right. yeah, just had to dash away. Just but no, I, away it wasn't it great the... to have uh, John on again. Brilliant. It was great. Absolutely it's great that he actually because obviously John's a very very busy man. Travels all over the world. Uh, and just for him to get him on our little show is, is I just honor. love the way he just remembers when all these iconic products as well mm. were launched and yeah to hear it from the horse's mouth like that is great yeah so that's, uh, no, no offence intended if that was I don't know if it was offensive but I like the way you've just grabbed the um, <laughs> you're trying to say no, no, no mind <laughs> <laughs> I like how you, we were talking about John and you just slowly brought the switch yeah, over I'm in front excited. of you there as well it's glided so into I'm, position I'm, uh, yeah. I'm getting ready for uh, for some uh, Gadget well, we, we're going to give your code away, unfortunately, to listeners. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, so we, we need people to start emailing in, don't yes. we? So let's yes. just reinforce so that's that. The, that's so great. anybody yeah. that's got a, a gadget, uh, got a switch, or would like to buy a switch when gadget comes out, there's an opportunity for you to win a new code uh, for a complete gadget uh, for the switch. So to enter, you just need to email microcast at corg dot co dot uk with why should it be you? Yeah. Why, should, why do you reason? deserve to win the uh, code for Gadget for Switch? Do you think we need to check with lawyers before we say something like, you could always send us stuff in as bribes? <laughs> do you think that would be... Well, like Jeff Cakes. Well, go and speak if to people leave. want to do okay. that, they're more yeah. than welcome to do that. We cannot say that it will sway the decision. No. Definitely will. No, <laughs> it won't. 
So, uh, yeah, please send us some uh, emails. And don't forget, you'll get them read out on the show, like Talonthorn. Send us some Jaffa Cakes. Oh, Talonthorn. What yeah. a legend. What a legend. It's so good. It's yeah. the best yeah. name ever as well. Yeah. It's amazing. Talonthorn. <laughs> Skyrim, again. <laughs> yeah. Here so we yeah, go. So there we go. So Johnny, that's that's it for the episode twenty two. Yeah, and we're gonna play out with a video. We're gonna play out with a video from Oscillator from Sink. Oscillator Sink. Um anything else that we wanna talk about? I've enjoyed today. It was it's good. been good. It's been a good one. Yeah. You didn't ask that though, sorry. <laughs> no, it's been good. He's so, told us anyway. Yeah. Thank you very much and we'll catch you next time. We'll see you next time. See you later. Bye bye. Bye.